Today we're going to be unboxing, setting up, testing, and reviewing the Spark SL from Blue. It is a $160 all-metal condenser XLR microphone and a cardioid pickup pattern on the capsule that is designed specifically for spoken words such as podcasts, streaming, and YouTubing. We're going to take a brief look at the packaging and included accessories, then we're going to mount it on the Blue Compass boom arm and run a couple of audio tests, then I'll give you my final verdict. Let's get it. Hardy Stallion, so just a quick note, as you look around the room in this video, you're going to notice that a lot of the footage had been shot several months ago. My room looks quite a bit different. I'm on a different PC. I have less facial hair and look substantially younger, healthier, and thinner. But be rest assured, the opinion of Kevin from six months ago is still my current opinion on the Blue Spark SL. Now, I will say the packaging and presentation of this mic is very good, especially for the price point. This originally retailed for $200, US however, it can be had on Amazon currently for $160. In this white cardboard box, you are going to have your included shock mount, which is actually all metal and high quality. You are going to have an information card noting some of the key features, such as the fact that it is a cardioid polar pattern and it does have a high pass filter and you are going to need an XLR cable to use this bad boy. It does come in a nice wooden box with the blue label emblazoned on the front. Slides to the side, you do have some foam in here protecting your microphone for its journey to you. And this microphone is actually substantially smaller than most people, including myself, initially thought. Now that means in no way, shape, or form that this microphone feels cheap or low quality. It is an all metal body. You get zero flex or moans and groans in the actual body here. Now I will say the switch for the high pass filter as well as the negative 20 dB pad are a little bit loose and clunky and I wish they had just a little bit more resistance to them. But all in all, a very handsome looking microphone. Let's get the included shock mount mounted to the Blue Compass boom arm, mount the Spark SL to it and see how she sounds out of the box. Over here at the PC with the Blue Spark SL and immediately I have some complaints, unfortunately. First of all, the included shock mount is very high quality and will do a good job of resisting vibrations such as accidentally bumping your desk. It does come with a standard 3 8 inch adapter for most boom arms such as the Rode PSA1, Gator Frameworks of this Blue Compass over here and getting the shock mount mounted to the boom arm is absolutely no problem. However, getting the microphone mounted to the shock mount is a real pain in the urethra tip. Now I would recommend installing the microphone to the shock mount first and then screwing the shock mount in, which does away with the whole point of having this little quick release ring where you can just hold the microphone there and tighten it into the shock mount. Because the threading is not only too short, but also a little bit crooked on my model, I have this thing held in place, but not very securely, not how I would like it. And I do believe this is a huge lapse in the QC or quality control over there at Blue. This is most unfortunate because I generally do like Blue products. However, this is simply something I haven't experienced with any Shure or Rode microphones, so that is unfortunate. But again, my advice to you is to screw the microphone into the shock mount and then just screw the shock mount into the boom arm. You'll have better luck that way. Sharing my screen over here, this is the TC Helicon Go XLR software suite, and I want to run you guys through a couple of my settings. As I do not have the negative 20 decibel pad on, this microphone is running on very low power. As it is a condenser microphone, you will need phantom power, which is an additional 48 volts of juice, but she's running on only 22 decibels, and as you can see, that's still clipping. So let's bump this down to 20 over here. So this is me talking at a normal volume. However, if I get any plosives whatsoever, or I get a little bit closer to the mic, or I just raise my voice a little bit, we're in the good, but you can easily get yourself into the loud range, but we're going to leave it at 20 decibels for now. Now, the preamp on board a Go XLR and even the XLR Mini, they use the same preamp, is actually a very, very good preamp. In fact, it's so powerful and also clean with minimal humming or buzzing that you don't even need a cloud lifter for mics that are hard to power, like the Shure SM7B, which I have reviewed on this channel. Now, over here in Noisegate, I have done tutorials on this in the past, but basically all you need to know, leave attenuation, attack, and release alone. And over here in the threshold, the entire purpose of a Noisegate is to cut out the background noise of your room. So when you get dead silent, you're not hearing things like your PC fans, your HVAC system, like your heating and air conditioning, or maybe a loud roommate that's wrestling with a significant other two doors down. Basically, you want to whisper the quietest that you'll ever be on stream. Let's go ahead and cut that background music. Maybe I'm listening for some footsteps and escape from Tarkov or something. And as you can see, it's not cutting in my voice, but if I go too high, it's actually cutting out start cutting out your voice and that's not what you want. So I'm going to have mine down here at about negative 55 decibels is good for this microphone. Over here in EQ or equalizer settings, these are the same EQ settings I've been using on the last four XLR microphones I've tested on this channel, whether they're dynamic or condenser. These are the equalizer settings I got from Harris Heller, aka the stream doctor over there at Alpha Gaming. And these things are the bee's knees and the mule's nips. They give you that rich, deep radio S presence with a warm vanilla tone. I can tell, I can hear, I'm getting a lot of clipping and peaking. That's unfortunate. You will need to run a pop filter with this bad boy. I repeat, you will need to run 
run a pop filter with that. The only downside to running a large external pop filter is it's cutting into your visibility, cutting into your peripheral vision when you're doing something like playing games. So it's a fine balance between actually minimizing plosives, which you can reduce with things like good microphone etiquette, which believe you me, I am practicing right now. And we are going to do a plosives test with and without a pop filter in just a minute. Now over here, compressor is arguably the most important plugin for a USB microphone or the most important mixer setting for an XLR microphone. What this does amplifies your quiet sounds when you're whispering and then also minimizes your loud sounds. You can definitely tell when you hop into a cheap stream and somebody starts yelling and it's blowing out your eardrums as a headphone listener. Now I would leave attack and release alone, set a ratio of 4.1, which is a standard ratio for a compressor and start getting a little bit loud, the loudest you would get on stream. And when you notice your voice start getting cut down, you're good. Unless you want a highly compressed voice, which I actually prefer, it gives you kind of that highly compressed radio voice. So what you do at that point is when it starts cutting back your loud sounds, drop it down about another eight to 10 decibels. Then make that up over here with makeup gain to where even when I'm talking quiet, like right now I'm speaking quite quietly, it's still at a good volume. But if I get loud, woo wee baby, this mic is hot. It's not blowing out your eardrums, even though that was damn near screaming into this thing. I recommend between five and seven decibels for the makeup gain. A DSer over here does just that. It cuts out those harsh S's, which is called sibilance. So let's run a little sibilance test. Sandy sells seashells at the seashore and also sells her sentimental secrets to scumbags, scallywags, and sailors. Mm. So I leave mine at 50 over here. That gives you a nice, organic, rich, natural tone, but also cuts out those harsh S's. Sandy sells seashells at the seashore and also sells her sentimental secrets to scumbags, scallywags, and sailors. I'm getting better and better at that test. All right, so now we're going to do some plosive tests. Now, plosives, in case you don't know, is that hard P, that harsh pop that you get when you say things like, Peter Piper pickled a pepper. I'm on Pickle Patrol with Patricia. In Call of Duty, my gun goes pitter patter pitter patter pit pat pow yeah terrible this microphone is absolutely horrible for out of the box resistance of plosives let's put a little pop filter on here so that was a little inadvertent test of uh handling noise there and it did not handle it well as you could tell it was very loud on the body of the microphone that is one thing that condenser mics definitely do not have over dynamic microphones is handling noise that's why live concerts rock concerts and whatnot generally they're walking around stage rocking out with a dynamic microphone is they resist handling noise that was a weird churning butter like a mom it shows a weird hand thing there. But anyway, we have a small foam pop filter on here. Let's try that test again. Peter Piper pickled a pepper. I'm on pickle patrol, with Patricia. In Call of Duty, my gun goes pitter patter, pitter patter, pit pop pow. Still not great. Let's get a bigger pop filter on there. Now, unfortunately, this absolutely kills the cosmetics or aesthetics of this microphone, and it looks like a hot bag of poop, but your sound quality should be a lot better. I'm on pickle patrol, with Patricia. Peter Pan slipped his pastrami in some sweet pudding. In Call of Duty, my gun goes pitter patter, pitter patter, pit pop pow much, much better. Now, I prefer these kind of foam slip-on pop filters versus the circular ones that clip onto your boom arm because those take up a large field of your view of your peripheral vision. Plus, you have to constantly adjust them when you move your boom arm around. And these ones actually seem to work better. Let's do some proximity effect testing. This is about four to five inches away from the capsule of the microphone. One of the sucky things about a condenser microphone that has the capsule on the front is obviously it has to be facing towards your mouth as it is a cardioid pickup pattern. But unlike something like the Rode Pod mic, which I just have happen to have sitting over here in which you talk into the top of it, you can have it off to the side of your mouth. So those plosives are less nasty because the air kind of just brushes across the top of the microphone as opposed to having it facing directly at your suck hole, which is unfortunate. But let's do some proximity testing. This is basically right up on the microphone. I am right on the microphone. This is about one foot from the microphone. This is about two feet from the microphone. This is about three feet from the microphone. And this is down the street at my neighbor's house. So generally with a condenser microphone, you want to be about four to six inches away from the cap with a dynamic, you want to be about one to three inches away because they're not as sensitive and they require more input from your voice, instrument, whatever it is you're recording. Let's do some off-axis rejection. So this is speaking into the capsule. This is over here on the top of the microphone, top of the microphone. This is talking into the back of the microphone, noise rejection from the back of the microphone. This is off to the left side of the microphone, left side of the microphone. This is off at the right side of the microphone, the right side of the microphone. All right, now we're going to do a little typing test here. Oh, not good. So I'm typing a DM in MySpace to your brother's sister's cousin twice removed on your mother's side. Now I'm doing some aggressive email typing. If you were to check the schedule, Donna, you would see I picked up your Slack six times this month alone. That performed incredibly bad. So now I'm going to engage that high pass filter, which cuts out some of the low end, the low frequency ranges. So if you have a deep thunderous booming voice, a very bassy voice, and you're getting a lot of humming or resonance through there, uh, or reverb, I should say, you might want to turn this on. So this is with it on. This is with the high pass filter on. And this is with the flat equalizer mode on. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on that negative 20 decibel pad. And as you can see, 
I got to get a lot closer to the microphone or speak a lot louder or crank up my preamp, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to turn on that negative 20 decibel filter. Sandy sells seashells at the seashore. Gross. Oh, that's not good at all. So you can hear a lot of noise coming from this microphone, a lot of humming and buzzing. That is not caused by the kick-ass preamp on the TC Helicon Go XLR mixer. That is on this microphone because how do I know? Great question. I've been running the Shure SM7B as well as the Rode Pod mic, which require the gain to be at about 55 decibels or so. And there is absolutely zero zero background noise or humming, and that is without anything like a cloud lifter or inline amplifier. Yeah, no thank you, ma'am. Let's turn it off. Oh, God. Simply not a fan of the out-of-the-box sound of this microphone at all, even with the pop filter on. Let's do some vocal effect testing, shall we? Welcome to the Thunderdome, bitch. The place is here. The time is now. Let's get on the grind. I told her, Jerry, you pick up that microphone for me. I'm going to slap you six ways from sundown, sweetheart. Give me a real man's microphone, like a road pod mic. Jeez. Mmm, that microphone don't sound true. It don't sound good for you or me. You can see it kicked me in the knee. Oh my, why does it sound so bad I want to cry? Um, damn girl, that microphone sounds kind of gross. I definitely would not give that guy the time of day. Easy baby girl, don't make fun of my microphone like that. I mean, this thing looks good. At least it looks good. Unfortunately, I do not want to have this microphone connected to my boom arm any longer than I need it to. I feel bad that my mixer had to even be subjected to such fuckery. Oh. You know, this is really unfortunate. You know why? This is a $100 Blue Ember. It is a condenser XLR microphone by Blue, exactly like this one, but it retails for $200 less. Well, $60 less now if this bad boy's on sale. I wonder why they're running such a substantial sale and this thing's practically being given away. Probably because this $100 microphone, which sells phenomenally, by the way, look at the reviews on Amazon, sounds a lot better. I ran this microphone for about seven or eight months as my daily and had no complaints other than the fact it did get a lot of plosives. That's why I went on Amazon and bought this little $8 foam slip on cap for it. Yes, that kind of messes up the cosmetics or aesthetics of it, but it did help with a lot of those plosives. And the out of the box sound profile of that microphone, the Blue Ember is substantially better. I will get this microphone a couple of pieces of praise real quick. The Blue Ember just comes with some laser cut foam, but no carrying case or anything. This comes with that nice wooden box. So it would make like a nice gift. However, what's more important than the presentation is the actual performance of the mic, which isn't great. This high quality shock mount is actually pretty good. Let's bump the desk a little bit. So yeah, you can still hear that, but it is greatly reducing the vibration inside the body of the microphone. And I am committing a cardinal audio sin right now. I have the boom arm actually mounted to the desk I sit at. Technically, you should have your boom arm attached to a side table that you don't actually sit at. So you're at no risk of ever transferring any vibration to it. Where even if you bump your keyboard rest or you are playing with a controller and you smack your elbow or something, it's not really going to transfer any vibration through your boom arm and into your shock mount. The plosive rejection on this microphone is practically non-existent and not just plosives. If you actually breathe... Breathe. Sorry, headphone users. I'll put a little warning on screen here. I'm not blowing very hard into this microphone, but if you just exhale while pronouncing a word, you're going to get a ton of that just gritty sound in there. Yes, you can bump up that negative 20 decibel pad and then bump up your preamp, but then you're getting a ton of hum or whine, a lot of noise from the actual microphone itself, which is unfortunate. I do think this thing looks cosmetically gorgeous. I do think it's great that they include a shock mount, but the sound profile, even practicing proper microphone etiquette and having those good mixer settings that I use with every other XLR microphone, whether it's dynamic or condenser, this thing still sounds um, not up to my standards and nothing that I would run a stream with or shoot a YouTube video with. Definitely not put myself in a podcast with other people with. If anything, I would use this $100 blue ember over here. I, I hate to say it, sweetheart, but I would just not recommend this microphone. It's going to be a, a pass, a puff puff, and go ahead and pass on this one. This actually is the first blue product I've ever tested that I do not like. I just blatantly don't like it and cannot recommend it. I do like the boom arm it's sitting on though. That's blue as well. That is going to do it, Stallions. If you enjoy this honest microphone review, shoving your thumb, not anywhere weird. That doesn't do anything for me. Trust me, I've tried it, but on the like button, help it to get seen by more YouTubers, live streamers, and podcasters so they can make a decision if this microphone is right for their needs. It's not. Don't get it. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Hold on. I gotcha. Peace. 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 Peace.
piece. This thing is a piece of pirated pickle penetration. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.